Hey fellow SweetScript developers, Eric from Stoic Software here again. I've got the hat on because it is freezing down here in my Colorado basement office. Uh, today in this video, we are going to take a step way back and look at kind of a broad overview of NetSuite and how SweetScript works. Um, before we get started on that, if you need to learn SweetScript, but you're not sure where to start, uh, I can definitely help guide you through my coaching programs. So check out the link at the top of the video description. All right, let's get started. NetSuite is a very large and complex ERP system that allows developers a massive level of customization through SweetScript. Now NetSuite organizes its data into elements that it calls records. And as these records are created, uh, manipulated, updated, deleted, uh, what have you, by uh, various sources, NetSuite will fire events. Some of those events might be triggered by a user interacting with a record, by a specific time of day, um, by another script modifying a record, or perhaps by an external system that is sending a request for data. So there are dozens of events, and each of those events can be triggered by a variety of potential sources. So as users and scripts and external systems are all working within NetSuite, these events are constantly getting triggered. Now our primary job as NetSuite developers is to identify which events that we need to respond to. Then uh, creating the appropriate script type that gets triggered by those events. So NetSuite provides us with 10 different script types to choose from. And each of these is triggered by its own unique set of events. I'm not going to go through all of them here, nor all of the uh, events that trigger each one, but NetSuite's help documentation is the best resource to learn more about each of these. Um, I've also got videos about many of these, and I plan to continue uh, creating videos until we've got them all covered. Now, I highly recommend that you study the help for more details on each script type and what events trigger them. Uh, in order to be a fully competent SweetScript developer, you should absolutely know uh, off the top of your head what every single script type is and which events each script type will respond to. Once we have selected the right script type or types for our project, we can start creating the source code for each script. And when we write scripts for NetSuite, we write completely uh, standard JavaScript. And we also have access to the SweetScript library uh, APIs as well in order to work with NetSuite features. So NetSuite scripts are based entirely on JavaScript and the AMD module style. I have a video uh, on SweetScript modules for greater detail on how these modules are structured. In this video, we're just gonna go straight into an example uh, and let's create a client script that responds to the user loading a record in the UI. So the first step to creating our module is to open up a blank text document and add some JS documentation that will indicate what script type we're creating. So I'm going to make a new, just a new text file. It's good, always good, always a best practice to have a standard naming scheme for things like script files, script records, uh, deployments, all of your custom objects, as you'll see as we go through this video. So this is a client script that will show a message to the user. So I have named it CL for client underscore show message. So we just have a blank file and we want to start with some JS doc comment. So 
So this is a documentation header that will indicate to NetSuite what type of script we are creating, what version of the API we're using. There are multiple versions of the SuiteScript API, and the privacy or the scope of our module. Next, we need to define our module. We need to define our module and any dependencies that it has. So we do this using the AMD modules define method. And we don't have any dependencies, but that is what we would define in some of these empty spaces here normally. We don't have any, so we don't need them. So we can jump straight into uh, writing the script that displays the message. Uh, so we need to, first and foremost, write a function that, when it's invoked, will display a message to the user. Alert is just a standard JavaScript method that pops up a message in the browser window. And so we have the new function named show message that will show this alert. And next we need to use the output of our module to connect our show message function to the appropriate NetSuite event. Now the event that gets fired when a user loads a page is called page init. Whenever the page init event is triggered, NetSuite will automatically invoke our show message function. That is what this script module right here defines. So we save our source file. And the next step is to upload it to the NetSuite file cabinet. To do that, we navigate to customization, scripting, scripts, new. And we select the appropriate file from our hard drive. So here's our slow show message file. Select that. We can put our script in any file, any folder in the file cabinet. We click create. Now NetSuite uses, uh, as we mentioned before, it uses this documentation header here to automatically uh, detect what type of script we want and what API version it is. So you can see NetSuite automatically grabbed that data for us. We give our script a name and a readable ID, and then we save it. And once it saves, we can see that NetSuite automatically recognizes the proper script type, the proper API version, and it also connects the appropriate functions based on what we defined in our module. Now once that is complete, we have successfully connected our source code to a specific event in NetSuite, but we haven't actually told it which record types or which users should be able to trigger this script. And we do that through a script deployment record. We create a deployment for our script using the deploy script button. We start by specifying the applies to. This tells NetSuite which record types uh, will trigger our script. So in this case, let's deploy this to a sales order. And once again, we give it a meaningful ID. Lastly, on the audience tab, we'd select who should actually trigger this script. And we can select any number of roles, uh, subsidiaries, specific users, groups. Uh, you can have any combination of values set up on this audience tab. But if our script should be triggered by everyone, which is probably the most common setting, all we need to do is click this select all under the roles selection. 
and we save our deployment. So now we have a script, a client script with a page init event handler, and it has been deployed to the sales order for all roles. So all that's left to do is demonstrate that our script works. So in the UI, we've deployed this to the sales order, so we can navigate to a sales order or create a new one. So let's create a new sales order. And once we enter one of these records, either an existing one or a new one, in edit mode, we should see our alert message pop up. And there it is, there is our hello world message. And that is it for this lesson. If you liked what you saw in this video, hit that thumbs up button, go share what you learned with somebody else. Click subscribe to stay up to date on all my videos and become a competent, confident SweetScript developer yourself. Thanks for watching. Keep learning, keep sharing, and I'll see you next time.